Maybe 11 vectors, we're going to have a look at a question like this, where we have vectors in equilibrium. Um, a 250 Newton weight hangs from a beam by means of two inelastic cords, and the cords make angles of 40 and 50 degrees with the beam. So if I go to the diagram, we can see that this inside angle here is 40 degrees. It makes an angle of 40 with the beam, and on the other side, it makes an angle of 50 degrees with the beam. Now if I continue this, and here where we have our weight, I draw in my axes, then I know that this is 50 degrees as well, we can see the alternate lines, and I know that this inside angle here is 40. And so this would make the angle to the vertical 40 as well. So the angle to the vertical is 40, and the angle to the horizontal is 50. And on the other side, we had 40 to the horizontal, and that would make this 40 as well. And if I have to draw in my vertical, that would make this 50 and this 50. Your starting point is always to figure out your angles and to figure out your angles to the horizontal and to the vertical, because this can give you some trouble if you don't interpret it properly. So what is meant by equilibrium? Now we know that equilibrium means that the net force is equal to zero. And this is going to give us a closed vector triangle. And now they ask us to draw a triangle vector diagram to represent the forces acting on the weight and indicate at least two angles. Now my tip for you is to always start off with a free body diagram because this is going to help us to actually draw that um, closed vector triangle. So if I use a free body diagram for all the forces acting, we know that the weight of the objects acts perpendicularly downwards, and that was 250 newtons. And we know that we have tension two and tension one. And I'm just going to draw in my dotted lines here that are going to help me with my angles. So these dotted lines will show me the angles that I need. So like we saw earlier, the angle to, if you're looking at the sketch here above that we started with, the angle here is 40, and this angle is also 40. And we said that the angle to the horizontal was 50, that was given to us. And remember that this form 90 degree angles, and that is how we knew that the vertical angle was 40 degrees. And we knew that we were given this is 40 degrees, so this would be 40 as well if we follow the Z. Let's just do this in black. So that would be 40 as well. And that would make this angle to the vertical 50 and the angle to the vertical here 50 as well. Now when I'm drawing my tail to head diagram for a closed vector triangle, I'm going to start with my vertical force. It's somehow easier to start with this force. Um, everything just becomes a bit easier. And we know that the magnitude of this force is 250. Now I know that I've got T2, which looks like this. And you can see from this diagram that T2 is in that direction. But for T2, this angle to the horizontal was 40. And the angle to the vertical was 50. That's this angle here. That's basically what I've drawn. Now, it's a closed vector diagram, so we've drawn our first vector tail to head. We now have our second vector tail to head. And now I'm going to get the third vector tail to head as well. Okay, I'm just going to erase those construction lines. Okay. So now I need this angle here. So when I use the same system, the angle to the vertical, we can see here in our free body diagram, it was 40. So the angle between the vector and the vertical was 40. And that is how we would get our closed vector triangle. And if you see that it gets a bit messy, then what you can do is you can just neaten it up a bit and add your angles in there. 
Now they want us to determine the tension T1 and T2 in the cord and you can use normal trig because it's a 90 degree triangle. Well we had 40 and 50 and that gives us 90 so by default we know this is also 90 because of the sum of angles in a triangle. So, but I would rather use the sine rule. Somehow it is easier to use the sine rule in these questions. So that was tension one, and this is tension two. So to use the sine rule, I would take the side that I know, that's 250, over sine of the angle opposite that side. And you can see the angle opposite that side is 90. And that would be equal to the side that I don't know. So for example, T1 over sine of the angle opposite T1, which in this case is 50. And then we would solve for T1. And you would do the same thing for T2 as well. And this question is on page 18 of the first body for those of you who have it. And we've got a full solution there as well. This was just a video solution for those of you who had requested that you needed help with the angles. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and share this video so that more people can benefit from this le uh, lesson and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos.